Today I'd like to share with you a very small photography project that goes really far at creating very big challenges. Images of Grace challenges us to think and to rethink the assumptions we make about the people we serve and the communities we work in. So I have a question for the audience. How many of you realize that we make huge assumptions about the people we serve every day? Assumptions about who they are, about where they come from, assumptions about how they got to where they are and what we need to do to fix them. Let me see by a show of hands. I'm glad we have an honest group. <laughs> well, you're not alone. We all show up to this work each and every day with huge sets of assumptions about who people are and our own sets of biases and more than anything else, an absence of understanding the lived experience of the communities we serve. As Doug said, I am Rod Jones. I'm the president and CEO of Grace Hill Settlement House, and we are one of the longest standing neighborhood-based service organizations here in the city of St. Louis. And our work is rooted in the practice of engaging in partnerships with communities to fix their own challenges. A large part of my job is spending time with neighbors in partnership and understanding the community as much as I do with our board and with our funders. Images of Grace itself is a project that really goes far at, and is our attempt to ensure that neighbors have voice. Each year, 20 of our families are armed up with cameras, and they're taught how to develop a point of view, a perspective through photography, of some of which you can see running in the background. The two other big parts of Images of Grace that's important to understand is it challenges our neighbors and residents to get out of the four or five blocks of their community and to explore the larger part of the city. The other key part of Images of Grace is that it really challenges the viewer to really think and rethink about the assumptions that are made about the communities and families that we serve that they may never see or that they may never go into. Images of Grace has gone, was significant in changing how I and other people thought about this work. And today I would like to share with you some of the assumptions that I made as I came along in this work and how Images of Grace impacted that thinking. I remember when I came here about seven years ago, after about a month or two of being here, three months, I remember saying to my development officer very candidly, listen, we are in a very conservative city that's very different than where I come from. So as we develop our materials for our publication, be very careful not to have a black man that appears to be quote unquote able body in our materials. You know, quote unquote able body is code for healthy and able to work because of course, the only criteria for working is being healthy. Again, remember those assumptions, leave out other things that go with it. So as, as I began to think about that story and went along a little ways and got to know more people in our community through some of our programs, I remember count, encountering two black men in particular in one of our service learning volunteer programs. And in my inner monologue, I remember thinking to myself, why in God's name would two adult men that are not college age be in a stipended service learning program versus in a job, a full-time employee job? You know, when I, think about, when I think about that, I began to realize today that those assumptions, that those biases were not wholly about the external forces of a cons very conservative community. Some of those are things that I carried here from my own experiences. Having grown up in a single parent household in public housing in New York, I realized that with that came my own assumptions. One, I grew up in a community where in low income, heavily African American communities, there's no such thing as mentally illness, mental illnesses. People just act crazy. <laughs> and in my household, above everything else, a man better work. I remember my mother used to say when we'd see homeless people, that man would never be with me and not have a job. And so I remember years ago growing up, working, working and going to school and traveling four hours. I remember the one day I took off 
and I was in my pajamas all day, you would have thought that World War III was going to strike. <laughs> and so with those biases of growing up, they, those things add. I also realized that a part of the bias I brought to that conversation was that I had my own sense of issues with my father's inconsistency with work. But Images of Grace has gone a long way to help me rethink and recognize that I had those, my own assumptions embedded in there. And it was really the work that you see on the screen that, and the work of the photographers as I got to know them over time. And I'd like to introduce you to two of them. The first one, for the sake of for anonymity, we'll call Fred. If you look through most of the pictures, you'll see pictures of children. If you know Fred, as I got to know him over time, that really typifies his value and love for children. What I didn't know in those assumptions is that Fred actually is the father of nine children, the husband of 20 plus years. My most intimate times of, in encounters with Fred was I can remember his son was in our preschool program. And this, he discovered over time that his son was having trouble because he had very similar mental health challenges. And I remember he was going to give up, and we had an opportunity to talk to him and work with him directly to get the help he needed. Over time of working and my relationship with Fred, Fred was always one of those guys who would show up as a parent advocate to stand up and ensure parents had voice. I realized over time in talking to him, he enrolled in a stipended program and not a job because he was doing a phenomenal set of personal development. He had destined within his own heart that he was going to be able to join mainstream work, to work just like you and I would, without having to have heavy doses of medication. You see, he suffered from his own sets of depression. Today, Fred is doing really, really well. In fact, his full-time job is a parent advocate with a statewide mental health program. And he's well on the way of creating a state association of parents that ensures that every single parent, regardless of rich or poor, has a right to have a voice in their kids' mental health. The other person and we'll call, we have finally come to know him as the ice cream man in our community. He's always that guy in publications who's getting kids ice cream and is a phenomenal leader in the neighborhood. He was the other of the two black men that I encountered. When you look through his pictures, you'll always see a structure in the background. And so when you look at it, you don't, it's not like the Temple Basilica. Sometimes it's a burnt out church. Sometimes it's a burnt out building or a raggedy building. And oftentimes, it's children playing or set with the background of the structures. As I got to know him, I realized that that typifies his love and value for family and community. Throughout his time with us, he was always the type of guy who was able to gauge neighbors and the neighbor voice and to bring neighbors to the table in a way that balances. What I grow to learn about him is that he was a father of three and a loving husband, and everybody in the neighborhood grew to love him. He was in a stipended program only because he needed time to reset his life. You see, when he was younger, he had a couple of criminal justice issues, and he needed only time to prove that he could be a good member of society as a citizen. He's doing well, has a full-time job, and is now on his way. And so we miss, we miss them as they go. I tell you, as I reflect on that, that dialogue that I had with my development officer. Oftentimes in this work and the conversation we have in our offices about this work is I can't do that. That's not something I understand. I'm not black. I didn't grow up poor. I have to tell you I have some level of shame in the thought that being a black man, I was above making those kinds of judgments and assumptions. But what I've discovered through Images of Grace and the photographers that you see is that my big, the biggest part of my job and our job as a practitioner's every day is to learn to suspend judgment and through whatever vehicles possible to create voice that allows us to understand the lived experiences of the people we serve. It is only when we can suspend those judgments and to adopt these vehicles that allow us to give voice, that allow us to have insight into the lived experience of people that we can be sure that we then create pathways for people in our community to have partnership with us, where we can have partnership of people and the institution, where we can suspend judgment and 
learn the lived experiences, it is then and only then that we come up to correct solutions that solve for root problems and not symptoms. And above everything else, when we can do this and suspend judgment, it's then that we are always reminded that society is made up of both people and places, and they both matter. Thank you.